Hey guys, and thank you for joining us once again. So this is it. Just as we mentioned in our last video, we're going on date night. What was the saying? Yeah, so we're going to a new place tonight. Um, I just found it on Google. Apparently it's a pretty nice place here in Toowoomba called um, Encores at the Empire. So it's called the Empire Theatre. Don't know what they have there. I'm assuming something to do with theatre and musicals and plays. Um, but yeah, apparently a really nice restaurant here, which we've never tried before, so we were keen to try something new. Yeah, it isn't... No, that's the courthouse. We don't want to go there. Not for any bad reasons. Bloody misfits in a posh, classy restaurant, and they let us in the riffraff. All right, guys. So just as we promised, here's the story of how we met. In a way, this was we were introduced, right? Yeah. We were introduced. You had absolutely no interest. <laughs> <laughs> like she just wasn't having it and honestly no I mean I had second thoughts because I just came out from a terrible relationship yeah so I came and to visit speaking to of terrible relationships let's keep a good relationship with our viewers and get our hands off the table so we don't keep shaking it and annoying the crap out okay, of them okay okay <laughs> so yes so how do we meet well, I came to visit my sister in Melbourne, mm -hmm. and then, um, yeah, I was going through a heartbreak, or a breakup from my previous boyfriend, mm -hmm. and I was like grieving th during that time, came, back, came to Melbourne to have like, you know, a nice holiday going out to see places yeah. and then um, my sister's friend who is your sister-in-law mm -hmm. they were talking to each other they were saying that um, why don't we introduce them to each other and my sister shared your photo to photo to me before and that was it it was like oh, give and me give me give me give me it's difficult because yeah it's I just came out from a bad relationship and mm. I said um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to meet him. Um, I'm booking my flight back to Philippines. And then um, my sister keeps saying that, why don't you try? Who knows? Blah, blah, blah. And then three days or four days before my flight, I just said, yeah, okay, let's do it. And yeah. What could I lose? Like, there's nothing to lose. We just have to go and meet, meet this guy or meet these friends of my sister. Well, that was the same thing with me. Like, I never really thought anything of it. So, my brother and my sister-in-law mentioned it to me. And at that time, like, I'd gone through a pretty pretty big breakup as well. And, um, yeah, I was taking it pretty, pretty rough. Um, honestly, the breakup was my fault. So, I've got no one else to blame for that by my, but myself. But I still took it pretty tough. So, I went on, like, a... <clears throat> A mission of self-discovery or maybe even you could call it a suicide mission so I spent a year training I think it was about two years about two years for you went to Nepal yeah yeah because so we ended that was a seven-year relationship and then yeah I spent a whole year training and booking uh, all my climbs buying up my equipment went to Nepal basically didn't really plan on returning I was indifferent whether I did or not, that's the honest truth. Um, thankfully I did because now here I am sitting with this amazing woman but yeah so I think it was about two years in total by the time I met you and then I was working as an electrician, I was only recently qualified, I was still very you know young at the time, I'd been married for five years and yeah they suggested yeah go meet her and I was like no 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 it took a few weeks to convince me, clearly took a few weeks to convince her then we ended up going to the Manhattan in um, Heathmont, somewhere around Ringwood, down in Melbourne anyway, for those of you who don't know where that is, some of you do, and um, yeah, we 
said hi to each other and we started talking and we just hit it off really yeah we and said hello and then we started texting each other and, and then, then started going out on dates while she was still um, with her sister here in well there in Victoria we didn't live too far from each other. I was in Ringwood, you were in Dananong. Mm. 20 minute drive on the freeway, if that, probably, no, probably less, probably 15. So we dated a little bit and I mean, personally, from my end, I felt nothing but warmth towards her and it was just a feeling that I know I've never felt before and not so quickly. And I decided to act upon it. I mean, I was getting a bit older. I was trying to get myself a bit more established in life and you know, I was at a stage where I thought I could really pursue a serious relationship and that's something that I knew that I really wanted. And then, before you know it, I'm buying a ticket to Manila. Because <laughs> she went back first and I lost my mind because I wasn't going to see her for about four months. So I just kept working, kept saving and I was travelling interstate a lot. So, you know, saving up as much money as I possibly could. And then, next thing you know... Like any tea coffee at all? Ooh, oh no, that's alright. We'll finish this and we'll head off. Thank you very much. Um, and then, <clears throat> yeah, so booked a ticket to Manila and I chased her all the way there and I, um, I wrote a big speech and had a proposal ready and my stepsister actually made the ring for me, custom. So that's the ring that I used to propose and it has a lot of value to him because my stepsister did make it for me. She's a jeweler and she's a fantastic jeweler at that. So there's a bit of a, it's like a family sentiment. Yeah, a family sentiment and something that's pretty close to me and pretty close to us. So mm. it's a nice touch anyway. We, I felt it was a nice touch. So went to Manila. She I, met me there and then. I never really imagined that would happen so quick. No, man. Because it was just, we dated for a few weeks and then got her a few weeks only her. and then he just booked a flight going to philippines and then before i knew it he was proposing well i booked the flight before he even left i was dropping her off to the airport and then i showed her just before she left look what i've done and i booked a flight to manila and we yeah. were both pretty excited about it and then when she got on the plane we just kept talking and talking over those months and then i flew over there and i think it was about it was september flew over there in yeah. September and then we went on a September. bit of a holiday to El Nido in Palawan and then we went on a holiday to Palawan and we went to a beautiful place uh, in the El Nido nest. called the Bird's Nest and that's where I proposed we I had a um, <clears throat> I hired like some guitarists and some singers to serenade yeah to serenade and, and then and, decorated and really paint, paint the picture and make the mood you know set the vibes it was candles, yeah set the stage it was really nice flowers candles on and the floor of stuff. And then that's where i did it so we've got some i think we've got some footage Videos and a few photos that photos. we're going to upload for you so you can have a look at how that all took place we did a really fun flying fox there as well yes so yeah we, we experienced a bit i met her family that's when we um we were looking for land as well and that's where the dream this whole thing started to build like our idea of actually living in the philippines as soon as i went there i especially being to nepal two years before that as well and then you know going to what do you call it i suppose going to going going to a foreign country going to a developing country as you could call it and then going to the philippines and just seeing the happiness and the joy of all the people and how genuine everyone is and I'm gonna be honest guys as much as people will hate me for saying this it's not the same here in Western culture it's just not it's cold it's gloomy and it's it's all about financials it's all about materials which I keep droning on and on about but it's true it's seriously true isn't it true yes. you live day to day we live planning for 40 years from now and we miss everything in between we're always looking ahead and we can't see what's right in front of us, you know? Looking for our glasses, but we're wearing them and we can't find them. And that's what I find, that's what I find is the case. And, and that's, that's, that's it, I guess that's where it started. It all started like that and then here we are, planning for a bigger picture of our future in the Philippines. Yeah. So everything else we've got a we've got a lot more videos coming for you that are going to elaborate a bit more on how we got Jan here and how we managed to have her with me for 
a longer period of time. We didn't have to, we did apply for a spousal visa, of course, after we got married and provided all the, all the certificates and went through everything properly. But we found a way to make it work so that she could be with me during that time. Most people tend to, to wait. They have to wait. For a longer period. So the wife usually, or the partner, or the whoever, whether it's the husband or the wife, they usually have to stay in the Philippines or go back to the Philippines. Yeah. And then apply for the visa. It takes, it can take up to two years and it's getting more and more expensive. But we're going to go into detail in regards to all of that in one of our upcoming videos. It shouldn't take too long, so stay with us for that. It's going to be interesting. We'll give you all the whys and hows. Um, and yeah, it'll, it'll probably provide a fair bit of clarity and give you some useful information that you can take away from this. So yeah, but we ended up going back to the Philippines. We got married um, 2019. 2019. <laughs> in which her hometown in Olmok City in a beautiful church as well which we have lots of nice footage of which we're also going to upload into this video for you guys to have a look at a little bit of snippets from yeah, our few, wedding yeah a few snippets mm -hmm. um, and yeah I suppose that's pretty much it is there anything else you want to add honey like that's that, pretty much that, how we that met that was it like you proposed to me so <laughs> quickly that um, I never imagined that it would happen so quick but neither I did said I said yes well, no, I, had no I didn't, idea. I didn't I just... know. I had no idea. My my aunties told me that you actually talked to my parents. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, while that's we right. were having a family gathering, mm. while well, I introduced him to the family, he secretly asked my parents that he would like to marry me, which was funny. I didn't know until after the proposal. Mm. Yeah, it's good to remember those beautiful moments. Yeah, we've been through a lot. We've been through quite a lot in the recent years, but we've managed to stick it. You know, stick it out and stick together and through the highs and lows, I, there's no one else I would rather do it with but you. It's been great, you know? It has been great. It has been a challenging five years, mm. but it's beautiful. Yeah. And after all that, here we are. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been a process and we're going to give you the insights into all of it, into everything, guys. So, stick around because... There's a lot, a lot of really good content coming. So bear with us and thanks for being a part of this. Cheers, Annie. Cheers to us. Cheers to you out there. Look after yourselves, guys. <laughs>